Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister and Member for Cast Resist, other colleagues of this Honorable House, my constituents of Soufre Fochejac, fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you today in the name of the Almighty. Mr. Speaker, I am extremely pleased to rise in support of the Appropriation Bill 2024-2025 as presented by the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance. Mr. Speaker, during March 26th and 28th, we gathered here in the House of Assembly in keeping with the requirements of the Public Finance Act. The Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance presented the estimates of revenue and expenditure for the current fiscal year 2024-25 which total EC $1.89 billion. Honorable members debated and sanctioned the estimates. Mr. Speaker, during this debate, I took quite a bit of time, almost half an hour, to address the needs of my constituents. So today, I will spend a lot more time focusing on what's happening in my ministry. Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday, 23rd April, we were back in this August chamber, this time to receive the throne speech from our Governor General under the theme, Enhancing Our Infrastructure. And later that day, the Honorable Prime Minister presented the 2024-2025 budget address under the theme, building our infrastructure for a resilient economy. Mr. Speaker, in presenting this budget, the Honorable Prime Minister took time to remind St. Lucians of the performance of this government over the past two and a half years. Secondly, he provided a statement on the health of the St. Lucia economy. And thirdly, he outlined the policies that will underpin the projections contained in the 2024-2025 estimates of revenue and expenditure. Mr. Speaker, over the next two days, we, the members of this Honorable House, are expected to speak and elaborate on the policies that impact our respective portfolios. In short, we need to put flesh on the bones and bring the various programs and policies to life. But Mr. Speaker, with your permission, before I delve in the work of my ministry and its allied agencies and their role in putting together the building blocks for a resilient economy, I would like to pause for a moment and reflect on what has brought us to this juncture in our history. Mr. Speaker, I believe that this introspection is important because if we do not know where we come from we will not know where we are going and if we do not appreciate what caused us to be where we were in 2021 and where we are now then we will repeat some actions that we ought not to repeat so mr speaker i will use my background as an auditor and do a very short audit and perform, and perform a comparison of the two administrations. Wow. Wow. Mr. Speaker, between 2016 to 2021, the United Workers' Party administration, led by the leader of the position and member for Miku South, had the following scorecard, and I'll read some of it, not all. One. They spent some $180 million on St. Jude's Hospital. And at the end of the day, had two unfinished structures. During that process, demolished two new buildings and damaged most of the existing infrastructure that was already installed. The new structure, which they constructed, does not have a proper roof resulting in significant water infiltration in the building. Moreover, the entire ground floor is missing from the structure. 
two. They spent some $112 million on horses and a horse racing track in Beaufort, resulting in the displacement of several Beaufort cattle farmers and the decommissioning of an abattoir. Three, they increased the rent expenses of government from some $31 million per year to some $70 million, Mr. Speaker. In the process, renting some five offices from a close relative of the members for Miku South. Four, they spent some $11 million for incinerators that has not worked. Five, they entered into a contractual ar arrangement with Health City Cayman for approximately $1 million per month for transitioning from Victoria Hospital to the OKEU, causing this government to settle a debt of some $25 million. Six, they sold the Dye Mall for $13.5 million when it was valued at some $60 million and then turn around and list part of the space for approximately $1 million per month. They entered into a contractual arrangement with Ernst Young to prepare the estimates of revenue and expenditure, a task performed by civil servants from time immemorial. This resulted in millions being paid to the accounting firm. Eight, they entered into a contractual arrangement with Lockerbie for maintenance of the playing fields resulting in an expenditure of some $32 million. And Mr. Speaker, the list of egregious act continues. Then Mr. Speaker, you juxtapose this with the performance of this government after two and a half years in office. Our record card shows, Mr. Speaker, the government focus on putting the people first as evidenced by some of the following achievements outlined by the Honorable Prime Minister in his presentation on Tuesday. And I will outline some of them here, Mr. Speaker. The government distributed some 11,700 laptops to our students, ensuring equal access to education. Two, paid teachers an additional $600 as material allowance to assist with knowledge sharing. Three, paid outstanding back pay to civil servants. Four, paid some 3,000 government pensioners a one-time payment of $600. Five, paid some 5,000 persons $1,500 as part of COVID relief. Six, removed a 6% service charge on price control goods, all in an effort to contain price increases. Seven, provided subsidy on the 20 pound and 22 pound gas cylinders, resulting in a subsidy of over 8.1 million last year, a continuing effort to combat inflation. Eight, provided subsidy of some 11.5 million last year on flour alone, just to keep the price of bread at an affordable level for single mothers to feed their children. Nine, remove the 10% withholding tax on small contracts of $10,000 or less. 10, commence construction of the St. Jude's Hospital. 11, refocus on implementation of UHC in earnest with the introduction of incremental services under the program. Pregnant mothers and seniors over 80 can access medical services free of charge, while persons with hypertension and diabetes can get their medication free of charge. 12. Reintroduce the distress fund with $1 million assigned to provide support to persons in distress. 13. Remove VAT on selected building materials providing much needed relief to persons who need to repair or construct their homes, and at the same time, spurring economic activities. 11, 14, commence construction of custody suites, 
which was unceremoniously demolished by the last administration. 15. Introduce the Youth Economy Agency to provide our youth with a helping hand to start their own business, thus providing the ecosystem for our next set of entrepreneurs to emerge and flourish. 16. Introduce the MSME program, where for the first time our micro and small businesses receive support in the form of grant, loan, and technical support. Again, establishing the ecosystem, the foundation for small businesses to progress and strive. So, Mr. Speaker, the evidence speaks for itself. It speaks to the last administration led by the leader of the opposition and member for Miku South as one who just did not know how to manage and guide this economy. This evidence showed gross mismanagement and wastage. Then, Mr. Speaker, you examine the records of this government led by the Honorable Prime Minister and member for Castries East. And you see, capable, prudent, humble, people-centered, forward-thinking, servant leadership. <laughs> Believing in the ability of St. Lucians, those at home as well as those overseas, to bring the country forward, working together for the benefit of all St. Lucians. And this budget, showing how with proper planning, all organs of government working in tandem to lay the strong foundation, one brick at a time, for a resilient economy. Mr. Speaker, this approach has resulted in three consecutive years of growth and an unemployment rate of 14% and declining. Steady progress in the right direction, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. So, Mr. Speaker, our Prime Minister also listed several capital projects that has commenced, and some to commence this fiscal year. Among them, several hotels, houses, housing, and community projects. And some of these projects are linked to our CIP program. So, Mr. Speaker, that is why our CIP program is so necessary at this time. That is why we should not tamper with it at this time. It forms part of the foundation that we are laying down now. And therefore, we ought to do all in our power to ensure that it delivers what we need at this time. Mr. Speaker, we are comforted that the due diligence regime applied is robust and complies with the various standards set by our development partners. So I urge the leader of the opposition and member for Miku South to have some contrition, mindful of the mess that his administration left us in to refrain from creating mischief. But instead, be a statesman yeah. and put the people of St. Lucia first. Mm. Mr. Speaker, our country, our people need this growth trajectory now. Let us work together to ensure continued progress. Now, Mr. Speaker, let me focus on the priority areas for 2024 as it relates to the work of the Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives, and Consumer Affairs. The policy framework and basis or justification for the spending we are about to undertake. I was presented, as was presented by the Honorable Prime Minister, there is indeed something for everyone in this budget. And this no doubt includes our business community and consumers. I believe the extension of the waiver of penalties and fines administered by the Inland Revenue Department would be welcomed by many. 
Also, Mr. Speaker, it is necessary for me to again mention that this budget has no new taxes. We've seen support to preschool operators, increase to all pensioners, NIC pensioners as well as government pensioners, 100% back mortgages for civil servants, continuation of COVID relief payments, the introduction of a minimum wage. All of it is saying that you have a prime minister that is mindful of the needs of the people of this country. To begin with, Mr. Speaker, the anticipated nominal increase in GDP of 2.2%, as well as the associated increase in total government expenditure of 1.89 billion on various line items, including goods and services, public sector construction projects and initiatives, aim at strengthening the business environment are all expected to provide growth and wealth creating opportunities for the private sector. In particular, Mr. Speaker, this projected increase in government outlay in the domestic economy, together with the packaging of incentives and other enabling and facilitating measures provided by the Ministry of Commerce, will continue to support the recovery and expansion in the manufacturing sector which recorded double-digit growth of 11.9% and an increased share of GDP in 2023. So, Mr. Speaker, as we set out in this new financial year to implement our approved program of works, for which a total amount of 17.2 17 million, 17 million has been allocated, we will once again focus our efforts and attention on a number of overarching and cross-cutting thematic priority areas as to achieve maximum results. These thematic areas have been carefully selected to support the growth and development of our private sector in a manner that is complementary and holistic while simultaneously ensuring the well-being of consumers. And they include, one, entrepreneurial development, two, resilient building, three, business facilitation, four, consumer welfare, and five, legislative and regulatory reform, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, for enterprise development, I now present 10 initiatives under this thematic pillar, namely the MSME Loan Grant Facility, Digital Transformation, the Taiwan St. Lucia Trade Show, Value Added Agro Products, Export St. Lucia Packaging Product, the Bureau of Standards Packaging and Labeling Project, Community Business Revitalization Project, the SBDCEA, Women Economic Empowerment, and Business Incubator. All 10 falls under the first thematic um, initiative of entrepreneurial development. Mr. Speaker, our MSME loan program is the flash, flagship program for our ministry. In particular, I wish to draw your attention and provide the latest updates regarding the second call for application under that facility. And the second call commences, Mr. Speaker, on the 2nd of April and ends on the 30th of April. And it is with great enthusiasm that I report that significant interest shown by both existing entrepreneurs and new businesses in availing themselves with the opportunity to expand their businesses. Mr. Speaker, I'm heartened by the remarkable influx of informal businesses by the remarkable uh, uh, being formalized by a registration of either the business name or being incorporated. And I will share the figures with you, Mr. Speaker. For 2022-2023, our the number of SEDU clients we had was 1,430. For at the end of 2023-24, we now have 2,616, an increase of 1,186 and 83% increase, Mr. Speaker. 
for business businesses formalized last year we had 1287 and at the end of this year we have 2354 an increase of 1067 again an 83 percent increase mr speaker and that is since the introduction of the msme loan program mr speaker Further, building on the lessons learned from the phase one of the program, the ministry has implemented several improvements to its processes, aiming for a more efficient and expeditious journey from the point of submission of application to disbursements of funds. The ministry has conducted a series of information sessions and business planning workshops designed to equip potential applicants with the necessary knowledge to craft better quality applications, develop effective business plans, and compile the required supporting documents. Mr. Speaker, I'm delighted to announce that these sessions have received an overwhelming response, indicating a strong demand and interest among our small businesses. My ministry has taken additional steps in this direction by seeking assistance from the OAS to support applicants in reviewing their business plans. Through this program, Mr. Speaker, 100 small businesses will have the opportunity to have their business plans reviewed by OAS appointed consultants and re receive assistance in enhancing and completing them. Additionally, within our own ministry, through our Small Business Development Center, we will continue to provide support to the small businesses. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as is often the case in financial programs, we have witnessed instances of unethical behavior wherein individuals have attempted to abuse and defraud the program. We want to emphasize that the ministry maintains a zero tolerance in such cases. Anyone caught attempting to misuse the funds for unauthorized purposes will have their approval revoked and the funds will have to be returned. We earnestly urge all approved recipients of the loan program, the, the, the MSME loan facility, to utilize the funds strictly in accordance with the approved purposes outlined in their submission. Once again, Mr. Speaker, we have recognized that programs provide financial assistance without accompanying technical support may not yield optimal results. Therefore, the Ministry is pleased to announce that in the coming months, it is going to launch the training and technical support component of the facility. Mr. Speaker, still on the MSME loan program, I'm pleased to report the Cabinet of Ministers approve a 100% waiver of custom duties on fixtures and furniture, fitting, sorry, as well as renewable energy and energy efficient equipment devices and fittings. So far, Mr. Speaker, 143 applicants have already received incentives, totaling some $240,190.62. Mr. Speaker, the Cabinet of Ministers has also extended this incentive program by an additional year ending March 2025. Based on current projections, this, these incentive programs is expected to save small businesses approximately $1.1 million in import duties by the end of this program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in our pre-hour program, we have engaged some of the beneficiaries of the program. And one of the beneficiaries in response said that when he received his benefit, it was Christmas in May. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we at the ministry said that with 70% grant, and 30% loan at an interest rate of 3%, it is Christmas year-round 
for our small businesses, Mr. Speaker. This place must be around. The second beneficiary said, Mr. Speaker, and I quote, the person who thought of that, of helping small businesses, that person is brilliant. Yes, Mr. Speaker, and he's correct. The brilliant person, the brilliant mind, is the member for Castries East, our Minister for Finance, Mr. Speaker. And let us show our appreciation again. Mr. Speaker, it is showing all the time that the Minister for Finance and our member for Castries East continue to put the people of St. Lucia first. Mr. Speaker, our on the, again, digital transformation. This is important as digital transformation, which has been driven by rapid advances in digital technology in conjunction with development in information and communication technology is with us and it is here to stay. So today, these technologies have radically altered the way production is organized and trade conducted within and among countries. In this new reality, Mr. Speaker, the digitization of information is such that e-commerce or the online purchase of goods and services in virtual markets and stores using electronic payment systems have now become the norm for conducting business worldwide. As a result, developing countries like St. Lucia find themselves playing catch up to the developed world and must adopt these technologies urgently. Mr. Speaker, in our attempt to bridge this digital divide, I am pleased that we have the Digital Enhancement Program to help us to prepare our people to adjust to this reality. This project is a pilot project jointly funded by the OAS and the government of St. Lucia to the tune of US $150,000. The deliverables, Mr. Speaker, are the following. One, supporting the development of e-commerce platforms in St. Lucia. And under this objective, Mr. Speaker, we are working with four locally developed um, e-commerce platforms, namely Get It Apps, Penny Pinch, Shopfront, and 758 Transit. Three of these are at advanced stage of development and have been rolled out to the general public. The second deliverable, Mr. Speaker, is the introduction of point of sale systems to our MSMEs. We have partnered with Bank of St. Lucia and have provided 50 point of sale machines with an initial one year paid subscription. My team is working, further working to extend this assistance to an additional 50 MSMEs and are further focused on synergizing this outlay with other government programs. The third deliverable, Mr. Speaker, is to have at least 150 MSMEs on board and fully utilizing the available platforms. In the new year, Mr. Speaker, my team will be focusing on this deliverable as part of St. Lucia's ongoing efforts towards mainstreaming digitization and technology. Mr. Speaker, the Taiwan St. Lucia trade show. I believe by now that every St. Lucian would have come to appreciate the excellent work being done by our Taiwanese partners here in St. Lucia, with so many projects and initiatives being undertaken across multiple disciplines. In this regard, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the government of St. Lucia is continuing its efforts to strengthen ties with the government and people of Taiwan through enhancement of bilateral trade and development cooperation. The St. Lucia Partnership Trade Show this November will see its 17th edition, Mr. Speaker. Further, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Commerce recently embarked on a trade mission to Taiwan as part of our efforts to explore further opportunities for collaboration 
technological advancements, and enhancement of trade with Taiwan. In this respect, Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to advise of some of our initial successes, including the opportunity to access new equipment that can help revolutionize our manufacturing and baking sector. In this regard, we are working with the various associations and individual enterprises to allow for the importation of these equipments, which would enhance their operation in terms of productivity and efficiency. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, we are pursuing opportunities in the area of digital commerce and policy development, drawing from the expertise of our Taiwanese counterparts. Mr. Speaker, beyond the importation of machinery and technology from our colleagues in Taiwan, we also intend to mount an export mission again in Taiwan, wherein exports and Russia will participate in a global food export scheduled to take place in Taipei in June of this year. This international event will provide an opportunity for St. Lucian products to be exhibited to individual buyers and companies from Asia and elsewhere. Item four, Mr. Speaker, which is value added agro products, which is CMOS. Mr. Speaker, another area where we have experienced significant enterprise development is the area of CMOS production and processing. This development is especially welcome in the context of the decline of the banana industry and represents an increasing viable alternative for many in the rural sector, especially our women. In this regard, Export St. Lucia has been instrumental in creating an environment conducive to exporting value-added agricultural products and in securing effective market access, particularly in priority markets. This involves satisfying the regulatory requirements for market entry, especially in the United States, which has posed a challenge to many agro-processors. During this past fiscal year, Mr. Speaker, Export and Russia worked diligently to satisfy U.S import requirements to ensure that exports to these priority markets continued uninterrupted. The government of St. Lucia provided assistance with packaging to the main CMOS production areas in Savans Bay and Poilet to ensure farmers met the basic requirements for food safety in production and post-harvest handling. Mr. Speaker, the agency aided the CMOS sector in complying with U.S. Food and Agriculture, Food and Drug Administration stipulations through financial support via upgrades to flotation devices to encourage the removal and discourage the use of plastic bottles in our oceans. Post-harvest post assistance continued with the provision of CMOS drying tables to farmers in Poilin and Opicon to enhance quality and food safety. 60 tables were provided to farmers in Peru, Caco, Vigée, and Opicon. Further, some 112 sheets of plywood were provided for the creation of new tables to numerous farmers in the Poilin area. Additionally, the government assisted the Poilin Simos Farmers Cooperative factory in meeting FDA food safety standards through refurbishment of the factory, which has helped to significantly improve traceability and meeting international standards. Beyond bolstering food safety and quality, Exports and Russia opened new markets as CMOS and other valued CMOS products this past fiscal year. Building on connections made at Export Dubai, St. Lucia CMOS products, including powder, soaps, and gels, now have a presence in Dubai. And more recently, St. Lucia exported CMOS to New Zealand. And very soon, we are going to fulfill the first 
and test shipment of CMOS to Romania. Mr. Speaker, packaging products. Mr. Speaker, another initiative aimed at enhancing the packaging of products produced in and exported from St. Lucia has been undertaken by, ex by Export St. Lucia. Here I refer to the packaging for export project jointly funded by the government of St. Lucia and the International Trade Center at a cost of some $250,000. Under this project, Mr. Speaker, a total of 21 small businesses benefited from new, highly, high, higher quality packaging, fully funded for the first production batch. Not only did the project revamp the packaging for these companies, the support extended to the provision of free packaging to meet the packaging needs for up to two years thereafter. Mr. Speaker, the importance of packaging material for export was made very apparent to us during the last fiscal year as we faced procurement challenges with respect to sourcing boxes for our bananas. This situation was particularly acute in recent weeks and necessitated urgent and timely intervention on the part of this administration. Consequently, through Cabinet Conclusion 1049 of 2023, Expo St. was authorized, albeit temporary, to import packaging material which was particularly helpful in assisting our banana producers to obtain boxes to meet supply commitments and demand in the export market in the wake of recent shortages. This temporary intervention, Mr. Speaker, has provided much needed relief to our banana farmers. And you heard my colleague, Minister for Agriculture, also speaking on this very critical issue. For, still on packaging, Mr. Speaker, but this time if the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards Another project initiative is what you call enterprise aspect of, is a project by the Bureau. This project, Mr. Speaker, provides training not only in the importance of proper packaging, but on what goes with packaging, which is the labeling in accordance with national, regional, and international standards or codes of practice. Mr. Speaker, although St. Lucia has duty-free access, duty-free and quota-free access, for most of its exports to several high-value markets, such as the United States, Canada, and the UK, through our various trade agreements, we nonetheless still face several non-tariff barriers in the form of technical and administrative requirements to effectively access these markets. Chief among these, Mr. Speaker, are the packaging and labeling standards, which must be satisfied in order to enter these markets. However, labeling and packaging requirements are especially burdensome and complicated to implement for many of our small businesses. To assist in gaining compliance with the national labeling regulations, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards offer an assessment service accredited to ISO 17020 which examines the labels and provide a detailed report which identify label issues and the steps required to achieve conformity. Given these challenges, Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to report that under a Caribbean Development Bank funded project to facilitate compliance with packaging and labeling requirements and standards, 200 small businesses have benefited from the training provided and 50 of them are benefiting from enhanced packaging and labeling assistance at a cost of some EC $148,000. Item 7, Mr. Speaker, Community Business Revitalization. This was launched in August 2023 out of a fruitful collaboration between the Ministry of Commerce and the Taiwan ICDF. The project is estimated to cost $1.1 million. 
and it seeks to breathe new life into small business sector with the, within the communities of Sufre, Library, Denry South, and Castries. To date, the project has commenced in Fauchajac Sufre, which has seen the erection of informational signs, a facelift and refurbishment of the Fauchajac Development Com Com Committee Office, which is now being used as an interpretation center. The project is expanding to library to offer similar support to MSMEs operating in the eco-tourism sector. Mr. Speaker, on the item eight, our Small Business Development Center Youth Entrepreneur in Action. Um, our SBDC has been very instrumental in preparing our youth for the world of entrepreneurship. And the Small Business Development Center Youth Entrepreneurs in Action Program, what we call SBDCA, has facilitated partnership between 80 um, fourth and fifth form students from diverse secondary schools across the island. And they bring them together with locally established enterprises during a two year project, Mr. Speaker. This year, the government of St. Lucia, in its thrust towards creating an entrepreneurial culture among our youth, has allocated $139,640 into this project. And this will allow 100 students to benefit from this project. Mr. Speaker, let me inform you that this six-week program, though minuscule in duration, has dual benefits. The small businesses get additional human resources and benefit from the input of these innovative minds. And the students acquire new skills. Let me hasten to say, Mr. Speaker, that this initiative does not duplicate the work of the Youth Economy Agency. In fact, it complements it. Item 9, Mr. Speaker, Women Economic Enter em Empowerment. Mr. Speaker, the plight of women has always been of particular concern to me and my ministry. Thankfully, during my tenure as minister, we have managed to do quite a bit to help alleviate their circumstances in relation to the pursuit of the entrepreneurial objectives. Mr. Speaker, some of this work has been done in conjunction again with the OAS, which has partnered with the ministry to provide training in the digital economy to three trainers, Mr. Speaker. And to multiply the impact of this training, these trainers now have trained some 40 female entrepreneurs under the OAS We program. Further, in an effort to provide our female participants with international exposure, two of our female entrepreneurs were selected to attend a two-day conference in Washington, D.C on the 13th and 14th of March, 2024. This conference sought to partner these women with members of the diaspora who could potentially provide economic linkages and technical support uh, for their businesses. This year, plans are currently on the way to furnish our female business owners with continuous practical online training, which is suitable for their business so as to ensure their better position to reap the benefit of digitization. Mr. Speaker, under our business incubator initiative, my ministry has been pursuing for some time this particular project. However, I want to say that Within our struggles, we are happy to report that the Invest St. Lucia has partnered with us and has identified a factory shell to establish the incubator facility as we are working with potential, and we are working with potential donors to make this project a reality. Mr. Speaker, I will speak a lot more on our business incubator at some other time. 
Mr. Speaker, our second thematic area is resilient building. My ministry is actively seeking and promoting projects that increase the resilience of the business community in various ways, such as through one, climate smart technology or products based on renewable and clean energy, and two, policies that reduce St. Lucia's dependence on external supply chain for its consumption through increased food and energy initiatives. So what are some of the projects that we're working on, Mr. Speaker? The main one for us is increased use of renewable energy for property solarization project. Um, Mr. Speaker, we commenced that project with our fisheries cooperatives during the financial year 2023-2024. And we will continue that project this year where we are working with four cooperatives. Goodwill Fisher Cooperatives of Viewfort, Library Fishers and Consumers Cooperative Society, Castries Fishermen Cooperative Society, and Grozile Cooperative Society. Mr. Speaker, still on the, the whole issue of resilience building, I want to speak a bit on the improvement of a, what you call the national quality improvement of our national infrastructure, which is some work being done by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. Mr. Speaker, our efforts to build our quality infrastructure continues through the work of the Bureau, which has a mission to strengthen the national quality infrastructure of St. Lucia. This mission supports, this involves supporting sustainable development, promoting health and safety of consumers, as well as protecting the environment while facilitating trade. Mr. Speaker, with the assistance of the Bureau, a critical step forward was taken towards building that infrastructure in November 2023, when the Inter-American Metrology System accepted our National Agriculture Diagnostic Facility in Union as a designated institute. Thus, through collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture, the facility will provide effective conformity assessment mechanisms to provide local, regional, and international consumers access to safe agricultural products. Mr. Speaker, the diagnostic facility will participate in an inter-laboratory comparison for cocoa, which will cement the services to the agricultural sector as a national reference laboratory. This facility will assist the manufacturers and agro-processors with the testing of inputs and finished products to allow for improved agricultural practices, certification, and market access. In addition, Mr. Speaker, the Bureau, through its relationship with the British Standards Institute, is currently providing technical assistance to the Material Testing Laboratory of the Ministry of Infrastructure, with the intention of achieving accreditation to ISO Remember, you have 10 minutes left. You have 10 minutes left. Thank you. 1725. This development, Mr. Speaker, is most timely and will ensure that we have the necessary technical capacity to make certain that the material to be used in the various construction projects is in keeping with our infrastructural trust, thrust, sorry, will be appropriately tested to meet acceptable industry and international standards. Mr. Speaker, the Bureau in the area of metrology is also working with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to ensure that they get the right training and that they are in a position to have proper measurements for traffic accidents. The Bureau is also working with the Ministry of Health 
to ensure that um, automated blood pressure meters are clinically validated as a prerequisite for verification. Mr. Speaker, the Bureau is also will continue working with our Consumer Affairs Department in ensuring the certainty of the measurement of price control and regulated products on our supermarket shelves. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak a bit on our Love St. Lucia campaign. It is a campaign that is critical towards the building of resilience within the St. Lucia economy. The campaign aims to enhance local production and in turn encourages domestic consumption of St. Lucia products and services. As part of this campaign, the Ministry of Commerce will continue to urge all concern, including government departments, ministries, statutory corporations, to continue and to focus on purchasing local supplies, such as our teas, toiletries, cleaning supplies, soft furnishings, beddings, and furnitures. This is critical for our small businesses. I will move to our third thematic area, Mr. Speaker, and that is business facilitation. And our main area here is the, what we want to do is the continue to install what we call our national single electronic window. Mr. Speaker, the success of that project is critical for our small business, we've for our businesses, sorry. And we've worked, we've been working on this for years now, but I want to inform the business community that we've just gotten some assistance from the World Trade Facilitation Agreement facility. And they're going to assist us in ensuring that we get this together. On the business facilitation, Mr. Speaker, I also want to report that we are going to keep our word to the people of Beaufort and open an extension of the Ministry of Commerce at our, in Beaufort, Mr. Speaker, and we're hoping to do so this financial year. Mr. Speaker, on the business process outsourcing, one area that we've noticed is that there is need to develop robust policies to guide the sector's development. And this year, we intend to work and partner with Export, um, with Invest St. Lucia to cause this to happen. Again, Mr. Speaker, on the business facilitation, I want to report to our vendors that we are working to prepare, we have prepared a proposal so that we can provide support to our vendors, Mr. Speaker. They are a very important part of what we do. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, again, I want to speak a little on our national export strategy. And there we are working with Export St. Lucia to ensure that we have a national export strategy that is going to improve our growth and development of export, Mr. Speaker. Export St. Lucia is also working under that area. We have a packhouse project, Mr. Speaker, on the CDB, under the 11th EDF. And what that does, Mr. Speaker, is to develop online training in good agricultural practices, good manufacturing practices, and HASA. That's critical, Mr. Speaker, if we are to increase our exports. Mr. Speaker, I also want to bring to your attention what is happening at our free zone. We have our free zone, Mr. Speaker, but we realize, although every unit at our free zone is occupied, we are still not happy um, with the, the full, po we, we don't think we are reaching our full potential, Mr. Speaker. So one of the things we are going to do this year for our free zone is to get into solarization for our free zone to ensure that all institutions within that facility is, um, get solar, reduce the cost, but also we are in the process of doing a five-year strategic plan to look at the direction of our free zone, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would want to touch a bit. Remember, you have five, five minutes. minutes left. 
I want to speak a bit on consumer welfare, Mr. Speaker, and I've already spoken about the relocation, not now, at our last thing, the relocation of our warehouse. Um, so I'll not speak on this anymore. Mr. Speaker, I want to remind our consumers of the subsidy that is provided by our government. Let us take flour, for example, Mr. Speaker. In Dominica, 100 bags of flour, 100 pound bag of flour, $181.50. St. Vincent, $155. Grenada, $166. In St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, we sell, we purchase a bag of flour for $128. And we sell it to our bakers at $85, Mr. Speaker. $85. I want to repeat that, Mr. Speaker, because most times we have to repeat, we have to repeat. Dominique, on sa kwa in France, $181. Sa kwa tribe yon dollar. La Guinade, se yon sa $66. Dollar. En Saint Vincent, yon sa $55. Dollar. Et puis en Saint Lucie, gouvernement, ka van yon sa kwa in France by Baker. Who, uh, what was that? Catriven Sec. Catriven Sec? $85. Catriven, huh? No, Catriven Kes. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, Catriven Sec dollar. Who shock sack for in first baker at no HT? Pascal Gouvernement HT for in first la. Yon san $28. So shock sack for in first baker HT, Gouvernement a mette $43. It's important, Mr. Speaker. Because if we say that we will support you, we will not be able to understand. Who is the government? I'm going to say that the government. Every time you eat a chop, the government is paying for it. That is it, Mr. Speaker. That is it, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, again on the consumers, I just want to thank the National Consumers Association, Mr. Speaker. This year, we intend to work significantly and in collaboration. We have continued working with them for a robust PR campaign to reach all strata of our society. I want to thank the members of the NCA for working with us, and we intend to do a lot more. Mr. Speaker, I will not speak on the legislative agenda. We are going to come into this house next year with a competitive uh, competition policy. We are going to come in with a the cooperative bill that was already before this floor, we are going to come before this house with uh, trade, with a trade, um, with a trade bill, Mr. Speaker, trade license bill. The one we have is very archaic and it needs revision. We have come before this house with the regulatory substance authority bill. And I want to tell members that pretty soon we will be coming with the cannabis bill. And we are also going to come before this honorable house with a real estate broker and agent bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with all of this, I want to take this moment again to thank the staff, my permanent secretary, the staff of my ministry, my colleagues here. Um, the CEO and directors and staff of our allied agencies, as a government, we will not be able to deliver without your support. I want to thank each one for that. I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister and colleagues here for the support provided. And I want to thank my constituent of Soufre Fosheja. My eternal gratitude to you for your support, patience, and prayers. I remain committed to serving you and to serve in the business community and St. Lucia at large. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.